Hello everyone, welcome to William and the Magic Box. Today on our show, we are going to have Nathan. Nathan is from Wales in the UK. So let's see what Nathan has to say. Enjoy the interview. So hello Nathan, how are you? Hi, I'm good, how are you? How are you? I'm very well, thanks so much for taking the time today for the interview, thank you. No problem, no problem, thanks for inviting me. So tell me, how's your day going so far? Yeah, really well, really well. The sun's up. Um, I've been to the gym, done a bit of training, I've done a bit of walking, um, and I'll continue to do so after we've had this lovely chat. How about Amazing. you? It's been great. I think this when the sun is out, I think it, it good, it feel good vibes around the city. I think it, it's great when the, you you see people around wearing t-shirts yeah. and happy. The seasonal depression lifts off. <laughs> Tell me where you're from, Nathan. I'm from South Wales, um, a town called me, but I spend most of my time in Swans, you know, okay. which is next door. Amazing. How far are you from Cardiff? Uh, about 30 to 40 miles, just up the M4 a little bit. I see. So tell me something interesting about the place where, where you live. Tell me something interesting about the area or something that's like the postcard. What's the postcard of the place where you live? Well, we're, we're really lucky. In fact, um, at the moment, in the middle of the city, not not so much. I mean, there's a lot of history here with Dylan Thomas, the poet, and, and other things like that. But uh, what I love about this place is that one side of the road, we've got beaches all across the Gower, um, many beaches, many nice ones. And then the other side of the road, we've got all the Greenland and the woods and the forests, and it's very magical. And I think we're very lucky with what we've got here. Amazing. And what, what do you do for work, for living, Nathan? Me? Um, I'm actually self-employed um, security operative, we'll say, um, ad hoc, so I don't work all of the time, kind of here and there when I choose, basically, which is nice. I see. Okay, so during the join, I'm going to explore a little bit more about your life and know about your point of views, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So before we start our journey, Will in the Magic Box, I would you like you to tell me something interesting about yourself or maybe something that not many people know about you? Uh, something interesting about myself is a good question. I probably didn't prepare enough for all of your questions, but we'll, uh, we'll have a good role. Um, so I'm hoping to go traveling this year um, in the midst of a big healing journey and process and um, I'm not quite sure whether I want to go down the route of Asia or whether I want to go towards more Australia, Indonesia and up that way, but I'm just going to let the wind take me and see where I can go and see what positive vibes I can spread around. Amazing. So you're going to exp to stay for a while there to explore the area, to explore the country? Yeah, yeah. just go and see the world, go and see the rock we're on. Amazing. Very good. Nathan, are you ready to go on a beautiful journey through your memories in life and share your point of views? Yes, yes, let's give it a go. Amazing. Welcome to William in the Magic Box. So I've got here my best friend. Full of random fun questions. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to play a song now just for us to relax before the first question, okay? Yes, of course. Just Let's like... do it. Right, before we start the game, during the journey, if it comes up a question that you don't want to talk about some reason, you don't want to answer, always can change, okay? Of course, of course. Right, first question for you is, if you were to raise a child, what is the, what are the most important things would you like them to learn? So, I am raising a child. My son is 12. Um, and... I, I'm just so proud of him because he he embraces who he is. He embraces his quirks and his weirdness. And he doesn't let that affect his kind of right to fit in. So he's with the popular lot. But I feel like the only reason he is that way is because he embraces everything. So the age he's getting now is a little uncool to, you know, play Pokemon and stuff like that. But as an adult, I still love that game. Um, but he... He doesn't care. He just doesn't care what anyone thinks. And he says to me quite often, oh, Dad, you know, I, I want to make you proud. And I, I remind him all the time that as long as you are being you, unapologetically you, and true to yourself, 
with integrity and nice to other people and open-minded, especially in the way we live now, I'm proud. Uh, and that's just, I want him to be a strong character. I want him to be secure and I want him to be nice to others. And, and that's that's the main main part. Um, yeah. Wow. How old is your child? So he's nearly 13 years old. Near 15? Nearly 13, one, three. 13. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's amazing. And so far, Nathan, um, what's the biggest lesson you've learned through your child so far? From my child? Or yeah. through my child? Ooh, um, I suppose before he came along, so I was like a child having a child. I was 19 when he was born. Um, and what it did for me was groom me up very quickly. Uh, it, and I'm, I'm, I know people wait, and ideally I would have cliche thing to say like to have waited until I was older and a bit more stable. But what, what it taught me was to not be so selfish or selfish. But selfish is a good thing in a way, definitely I think. But when when you've got this little bundle of joy that can't do anything for himself, everything you know or want to do kind of goes out the window at least for a little time. Wow. And what's the biggest joy of being a dad? Mm, I think it's just being called dad, you know, and, and being there and me and him have uh, got a good bond and he comes to me if anything, he needs any advice. So, and it's really nice to have that. I see. Very yeah, good. Definitely. Proud. Oh, nice one. I would never tell, my God, when I was checking your profile, and of course, you're a very young guy, I would never tell that you have a 13 years old child. Yes, wow. I was, well, I'm 32, so I was a baby having a baby. <laughs> Interesting. But enough, my mom, actually, my mom, um, she she had me uh, around the same age as you as well. I have, young, nice. very, I have very young parents. My mom just turned 60 now, so. Wow, wow. Great. Yeah, it's definitely up, got benefits as well, you know, being closer. Absolutely, growing up, and my dad as well. My dad is very young. I remember growing up. There, there were so many situations that people thought I was their cousin or their, you know, their brothers. So yeah, and they, yeah, yeah. They, were, they were playing around with that. I remember growing up. They were playing around. They loved it. The attention. The, yeah, that's that. great. Good. Next question. Please, you can drink. What are you drinking? Coffee. Coffee. Amazing. Yep, Americano. Next question for you is, do you have a unique ability that you think no one has or you never met before? Um, I think I see things slightly different to most people. And I know there's definitely a community around the world somewhere that, that it's just similar as I'm starting to attract those people now in my life. But um, I'm just a bit weird compared to most people, you know. I stand out and um, I, I, I embrace it and I, I'm proud of it. Um, but in, as far as an ability goes, nothing nothing overly special. I, I think I just step out the side the norm and see things a little differently. And sometimes I can bring people with me and sometimes people think I'm just a crackpot. But... So when, when. And when you think about yourself, Nata, when you analyze yourself, what's the biggest joy of being you? What do you like the most about being Nata? Um, I'm a very simple man. And as I said, I've gone through this transformation more recently. And I am just happy to be here. Um, I'm, I'm, I have my health. I'm perfectly healthy. I'm fit, strong. And I work a lot for that, you know, and, and, and I do. But... I'm very lucky in my house and my loved ones around me. Very small community, but amazing mm -hmm. community. And that's what I'm lucky for. It's those little things that we live for. And you always had long hair? No, I've been growing it out since September <laughs> last year. It's coming, it's coming. I started amazing. surfing and then it just goes hand in hand. So. Amazing. Next question. Right, before the next question, of course, we got connected through TikTok, yeah? yeah. And when I was checking your profile, my God, what um, I, I felt so That's very inspiring great. to see you walking through those beautiful places in nature, you know, around lakes, around walk, walks, you know, path. And um, yeah. it, it's amazing. I was like, my goodness, what... Um, 
lucky, how lucky you are to be able to, you know, be in those Definitely. places. So my question yeah. for you is, tell me the inspiration for you to do your videos on TikTok, you know, surrounded by those beautiful places, nature. Tell me a little bit about um, your your idea. It's, it's, to be completely honest, and I'm glad you've asked, because um, this is a fairly new thing. And the reason why I'm doing this mainly nowadays is because I enjoy it. And I've had a couple of people messaging me saying I've helped them. And to me, if one person is helped from what I've done, mission accomplished. Um, I don't care how silly it makes me look, if that's what people think. But I come from a very masculine background. Um, a lot of trauma back in my childhood. And I started working in security and everybody's a professional fighter this or rugby player that. And, and all around me, I had these very strong, stoic males. Um, and not just males, females as well. And, and I was, I suppose, very one-dimensional when I was like that. And, and I came away from uh, door work, actually, the, the, on the doors. I was a bouncer for a while, and I wanted to see the world burn when I was like that because I saw the bad in everybody. But then I came away from it, and, and I started changing. I started surfing. I was going in the sea a lot and getting my feet in the sand and going through the woods and just, just generally becoming more at one with nature. And then everybody around me, so my spirit started lifting. I started being happier and I was doing all these healthy things and living a healthy lifestyle. And there's a lot of people around me that are just the complete opposite. And, and it's so painful to see most people around you are sad. They've got sloppy shoulders. They don't smile. They're not happy. Most of my family have got health issues because of bad life decisions. And, you know, cancer is rife. And, and, and it, I've just seen it everywhere I look. And I feel like this ray of sunshine myself. And it's so good to feel the way I feel. And I want to help other people do it. And one day I thought, you know what? I'm going to video what my thoughts are in the head. And I think the first one was basically taking accountability for our actions. And, and basically what we put in is what we kind of get out. And, and, and I've done a lot of healing work. Listen to a lot of podcasts. I've, I've done a lot of uh, books, read a lot of books. And listened to them when I was working. And meditations and opened up all these doors and and i just want people to come with me because i'm i'm fed up of seeing people depressed and then in my life that just doesn't exist and and everyone can do it essentially you know um so i just want people to be better so that's my inspirations and i say my little piece and help some people along the way i guess I think it's amazing, you know, watch your videos on TikTok. I was like, oh my God, that's a, that's an incredible idea for you to talk about real things at the same time as well, having this background around you and just looking at them, you feel already peaceful because, you know, those places, peaceful, yeah. places, it's impossible. Even though you're not there in person, but seeing someone there, it's already, uh, it's a good place for you to listen to you, you know, people that can connect with you, yeah, know yeah. you are. You know, it's such a beautiful place. And it's taken us back to our roots as well, you know, and there's definitely an energy as soon as you step out of the city and into the woods um, and the birds. It just is, I, I get goosebumps. I know it sounds corny, but it does. It takes me away from the real world where everything is war and nasty and everybody hating on each other. And it really just, I, I advise anyone to try it. It's, it's, it's so good. Amazing. There's none of that there. Good. Next question is, what season you feel more connected with and why? Season is in weather? Yeah. So I think I'll always be a little bit of a sun worshipper. Um, I love surfing and I like being out there. But the only problem is when, when the sun comes here, the waves go. So since I've started being more outdoorsy, I actually think I prefer the colder weather, so maybe not full-blown winter, maybe autumn-ish. This is really nice, and um, all my favourite spots are not so busy, and it's, <laughs> that's what I'm finding. You know, the sun is coming out, and everywhere I go to escape is just so full of people. But at the same time, it's really nice, because it's nice to see the people and the families connect with nature. And I think what people need to realise is we don't need to wait for summer to do that. We're, we're waterproof, we're weatherproof, and we're tough. We can, we can get out there no matter what. But... I say for me, autumn going into winter, I, I like it. It's nice and quiet there. I, I quite like the dark and yeah, it's nice. Is your birthday around some um, autumn time as well or not? The winter time? No, no March, my birthday is. 
Wow. Pisces, yeah. Which day of March? 11th. Okay, my mom's, I just was talking about my mom, her birthday is in March as well, but the 9th. Nice. Very nice. Close. Oh, that's close. That's close. My, yeah. In fact, my mother and my grandfather are both on the 11th as well. Wow, interesting. All of us on one day, yeah. Wow. And it's, I'm just asking you that because someone told me, uh, I'm, I heard that once, that um, you feel very connected with the season when you were born. And for me, my, my favorite season of the year is the autumn. I love the autumn. There's something about it. I know some people, they find a bit, you know, gray and a bit sad, melancholic. But for me, there's something about uh, autumn. Yeah, definitely. That, uh, it's it's something about the colors. It's not it's fresh air. There's something about it that uh, you see the leaves falling down and uh, this color. It's, it's, it's colorful. like a transformation, isn't it? Yeah, transformation. Really nice. yeah. And for me, it works very well because my birthday is in November, so it's always nice. around this time as well. So for me, it works very well. I love the autumn. Of course, I love summer and spring. There's always a beauty yeah. behind every season. But Definitely. if I, if I choose one for sure, autumn it's my connection. There's something about the that time of the year that brings me some you know comfort somehow yeah yeah definitely yeah i agree amazing ready for another question yes of course let's go do it next one hey nathan from wales next question is who is the most influential person in your life at, at right now at the moment me if I can say that, if I can say yeah. that, I've got I've got people that I resonate with, you know, like um, Stephen Bartlett, Jordan Peterson, dare I say it, even Andrew Tate. Um, and I don't go to the extremes of some of these people. I find myself somewhere in the middle of all of them. But at the moment, the only person that can influence me to get up in the morning and do what I do and act a bit silly and not be like everybody else and go where I want to go is me. And, and I, I, I do the mirror talks every day and, and I, I, I tell myself and I rely on myself a lot. I'm going through a period at the moment where I'm using isolation for my benefit, something I was always scared of. Um, and now I've found the comfort in it with myself. So I'm really proud of myself at the moment. But of course, you know, there, there is. Um, and even so much, like I said earlier, I see my son, he, he's doing so much sport at the moment and he's very well academic. and. You know, sometimes you've got to remember who's watching as well. So in a way, that can be influenced. But, yeah. And why do you see that? Why do you find yourself, you know, being influential? What What is connection about it that, you know, you feel uh, that you are uh, somehow uh, getting influenced about yourself, if you know what I mean? Why is that? I think for me, in regards to... It, it depends, because there's a lot of different avenues i suppose like the gym for example if i was to wake up and go to the gym that's just part of me part of my training and i've got to do it and i've got to do something physical academic reading writing before i allow myself any sort of free time and, and this is what i'm teaching to my son as well and while allowing him to be a child of course but for now i suppose what i'm doing for me the really addictive part that influenced me was the first person that resonated with me and told me that uh, it helped them, and and I felt that they, I felt amazing. I felt so accomplished, and that was one person from the other side of the world on TikTok who was having a bad day and just came across my video, and I was like, I want to help people. This is what I want to do, and I felt so proud that what I want to do helps others. But I think that keeps me going, you know. And, and sometimes, even though I'm at the beginning of this journey, and you know, it's, it's only hitting a couple of people at the moment. I'm still, if it helps people, it helps people. And I, I like that. I definitely. Very good. Yeah. Three questions left. Let's do it. Really? We're flying through these, yeah? Before the next question, you know, 2020, yeah, the world literally went upside down. As you know, uh, you know, of course, uh, there, yes. was a, there was a time that... You didn't know what was happening. People, they were going through a lot of tough times, including myself. I think all of us, we had the, you know, this uncertainty was there and it was a bit scary. For yeah. you, for you, um, two questions in one part. The first part of the question is, what for you, uh, it was the most tough, difficult time during the time that you face it? And the other part is, what's the positive outcome 
that for you came out of that you know challenging time if you can share yeah of course so for me it just felt like a dream and i've always been a bit of a rebel anyway i've never fit in i've never been one to do as i'm told and i've never been i, I question things i woke up one day and i was just like why why are things this way why is everything that way why are we all doing the same thing why am i doing the same thing as 10 generations before me i, I just can't do it anymore you know and for me i don't firstly i'll start off by saying that i don't judge anybody for their decisions pre pro um you know pro covid or anti covid or anti vaccine or pro vaccine i believe you should always do what you want to do and apolog- unapologetically and just own it and no one else really has a right to judge other people no matter what it comes to unless it's immoral you know so no that's out the way <laughs> i i could give it if i'm allowed to say that and for me it was an inconvenience with things shutting and the gym shutting and and but what i brought out of it i liked the quietness of it all i liked not seeing many people and um it changed me in a way for the better for the much better for pre covid i was a bodybuilder a wanna be bodybuilder and wow. i was extremely unhealthy with it. and i mean i took the peds i took i took a lot of steroids um wow. i i ate obscene amounts of food i took a lot of supplements and i couldn't miss a grain of rice or my head would blow um and i was training twice a day fitting it around every then taking sick days from work just to go to the gym wow. and and yeah i was really unha- i looked great on the outside but it was it was unhealthy and 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 there are people that do it healthily that can handle it better than i could have but for me that's the way it was so i was i was i was here and then covid hit and within a couple of months all the gyms shut and i was like oh everything that i've been putting all this effort into has blown it's gone it's done and then i was left with me i was left with who i was and I put on a lot of a lot of I lost weight but I put on a lot of weight you could get what I mean it's on the belly and and I was always severely insecure about how I looked I was always checking the way I looked I wouldn't go out some days if I looked a certain way or and it was unhealthy and then I got this belly um and and I owned it I was proud of it I didn't care I was I was so it changed me in that way because well, I can't go to the gym I may as well own it and then when covid actually ended it took me about 2 years or a year to get back in to the gym wow. and then I took a much different approach the drug free approach the health approach the mobility so it changed me in a big way and it brought me away from that scene I guess and pushed me into a much healthier scene and doing a you know other activities I used to think and running and healthy things and my eating habits are now much more normal i guess is the word yeah um so yeah the the whole if if they said there was going to be a lockdown now i wouldn't bother me i'd be okay with it but i just think it uh, here we come with a gray area it's the control and the power and the you know the absolute just nonsensical bull crap that came along with it that really got me but I just I'll turn the TV off and I'll go into the woods and I will ignore it all you know what I mean it's I can I can keep myself <laughs> occupied without all of that I think and fitness always been part of your life so I was actually the fat kid um and I think that's why it's been a part of my adult life because I was the slowest I couldn't run and I started swimming when I was about 15 mm-hmm. uh 14 15 then I got into the gym I was playing rugby being from Wales as we do um and then yeah so over half of my life now and I'm 32 so I've always been into something and I promote it to anybody no matter what it is just do something physical absolutely very good next question is share with us a crazy or funny story that happened to you when you were a child at school child at school this is just <laughs> it's a funny one so like I said nothing around here but some in the coffee shop <laughs> um there was quite a lot of trauma in my childhood um and from many different aspects and i resonated with other naughty children and most of my friends when i was a child were actually not in school they were thrown out of school we were the rejected society 
and and we loved it. We were pounds for trash, and we loved it. And um, we, so all of my friends would be out of school, and I'd have to go to school for like six hours a day, and I was doing everything I could to get out of school, which is what not I would advocate now. I was being naughty, I was fighting, I was just being class clown. I wasn't turning up, and and I was I was just trying all I could to get thrown out of school, but the teachers. They were almost excusing my behavior because I was going through stuff at home. I own my behavior. Yeah, I was going through stuff, but I was having a little. <laughs> and and and, but I understand, you know, the the impact the trauma has and stuff like that. So, uh, one day, I just all my friends were. It was like coming up the summer. All of my friends that wasn't a part of the school system were all going down to the river, and they were going to have a couple of beers. It was about fourteen, fifteen at this time. And and they all wanted to, to come. I wanted to go. So it was a, I was like, oh, I've got to go to school. I've got to go to school. So I went into school that day, this morning. And then I all I could think about all day was all of my friends down the river, having a good time with their music. And I was like, do you know what? I've had enough. And this is a naughty story. but And it's something that I wouldn't advocate now. But I, I look back and it was funny. And one thing I want to say as well is I look back at the teachers there and then. And I can't thank them enough. For this uh but basically what happened was i there was a river i went over a bridge to a river uh over a river sorry to school and i one day decided i'm i'm not going anymore and i wanted to go to the to the river with the friends myself so i packed all of my school things my uniform all of my books my school shoes my work everything that i'd ever accumulated from school i put it in my school bag and i just threw it off the bridge and I was so young. And now, now I love Nathan. I'd be like, nah, that's pollution. Don't do that. But this was years ago. And I was a child. And I, I'm not going in. I've had enough. And I didn't go in. And I tried walking home. And my head of you, Mr. Kedwood, let's spin him some credit. My head of you. He ran. He saw me. And he caught me. And he was like, Mr. Alexander, you need to go to school. I was like, well, I haven't got anything. No, I'm not going to school. I haven't got a uniform. I haven't got shoes. I haven't got... And he, and he was just like, right, so he gripped me, not not in an abusive way, but gripped me by the spot. And he marched me around my local town. And and we were a poverty-stricken family as well, so I don't know whether there was an element of pity here. And my mum could afford the uniform and all the other stuff that came along with it, but I think he was so dedicated to me and he was proving a point because everyone used to say, you know, there's potential there. There's potential there, but he's having a tough time at home. Well, realistically, I just love being naughty. And I wasn't, like I said, nothing like my son now. My son's a credit. Um, so what he did, he marched me around my local town. And this is probably some, one of the most embarrassing times of my life. And he marched me into the shops and bought me out of his own pocket, school uniform, all of my school books, a new school bag, everything to do with school. And then he even made me buy a bouquet of flowers. And he marched me up to my front door. And he said, I want you to apologize to your mother and I'm going to see you in school in the morning. And when at the time I didn't get it, I didn't get. I was just like, "Oh, this is horrible. I, I, I don't want to go to school. This is me, such a soul." And, I, and now I look back and I'm thinking, "That's the via dedication to the cause," and and I appreciate it. And at the time, I just think it was, you know, it's funny. I was, a, I was a young child who thought I had it all worked out. I'm going to be a millionaire when I'm older anyway. What do I need school for? All in the brink. And no, nope, he wasn't having none of it. Pushed me around the town, made me rebuy everything. And marched me back to school the day after, and yeah, it was. It was just, I remember that it's crystal clear. Wow! Oh my God! <laughs> you deserved, Nate, and you deserved for sure. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I wouldn't. Um, how bad I was when I was younger in school. I think it was after the time of the cane and the slipper and stuff like that. But I did. I I I felt a bad one about you. I love it. I love that you share about it. I yeah. think all of us we had those, you know, moments in life, you know, being a rebel or something. Because sometimes yeah. you cannot understand. You sometimes you just get want to get some attention somehow. Do you know what I mean? I think yeah, it's possibly a cry for help, but I'm not excusing the fact that I was I thrived off stuff like that as well. When I was that age, you know, when I was young. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's funny. I know. It's the only thing I can think of. <laughs> Two questions left. Let's do it. Hey, next question is, what question would you like to be asked? 
What question would I like to be asked? Yes. Oh wow, that's that's a good question. That's one you can't even prepare for, really, is it? It's, it's <laughs> um, I think a good question, and for me now, it's um, I suppose we've already touched up a little on it when we were talking about the influence of myself and that, but. I do like the question, what motivates you? And I, I think it could be asked a lot, and it may be a little cliche, especially with other podcasts and stuff you know, going on. But I think it's a very good question. And watching people struggle to the point of, like I have a friend who I coach slash friend, and we're becoming close, and his mindset, I heard him say the word the other day, that was, um, oh, I don't want to live for too long. I don't want to get old. I'm not happy. And, you know, like, like, Sorry, I've just gone a couple of times. I'm not too sure. It's okay, don't worry. I will go for it. And, and I just, ah, it breaks my heart to hear that. So when people, the question, what motivates you, I suppose, is, is the question that I'd like to be asked. I mean, am I answering it or am I just asking the question? No, it's fine. And now I can, I can kind of ask a question regarding that. You know, about motivation. What do you think, um, you know, people, they should, um, you know, let's say focus more about something to, to, to motivate themselves? What do you think nowadays, the, the world we need right now? What's something that you think people, they should be more motivated about or should more get into it something? If you have something comes to your mind? I think, I think it's health. Health is everything. It's all we have when everything else is gone. And when that goes, we're not here anymore. And mm -hmm. as I said, people are making such key decisions and eat things. I mean, don't get me wrong, I balance. I eat a bit of sugar here and I don't drink personally um, and nothing else. But I don't judge anybody for everything. And everything can be done in moderation. And I don't expect everybody to be too total for the rest of their lives and have no fun or what other people deem as fun. But moderation and like i said I'm, i'm i'm seeing people dropping like flies around me with bad health and i think 73 years is the average lifespan now and i spoke about this in one of my posts and i'd be happy to get there and then i'd be happy to live another 30 years on top um and i used to have the mindset myself i'm here for a short time not for a i'm here for a good time not for a long time and I'm, well i want both there's a, there's, a, there's a gentleman that goes to my gym Clive, his name is, and I hope he doesn't mind me speaking about him. Um, he's 77. He does an hour to two hours of cardio every day. Wow. He uh, does an hour of weights training. He looks after his father, who's got dementia at 101 years old, and he wow. supports a family, a, a lady with two kids at 77 years old. I've never seen anything like that. And I'm like, I want to be there. I want that. And for other people to think that they want to die any time before that and this is coming from a person that tried taking his life seven years ago between five and seven years ago i've been there i understand this is why i feel like i've got a right to comment on it and yeah i'll say judge but lovingly judge and understand people's scenarios you know and situations but i just want people to not be so bleak minded to want to live until you're 80 to be fit when you're 80 90 years old and want to meet the one you love and want to have a community of people around you and I think if everybody could just wake up a little and, you know, I suppose another thing for me is that most people also act like sheep. The, the day that I woke up and started questioning everything, it made me realize that we're all doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. We're all fighting for the shiniest thing. We're all fighting for the coolest car. We're all fighting for the biggest house. And for me, letting all of that go, relying on public transport, sofa surfing, and not even having a TV, been the most freeing experience of my life and that's what most people fight for and now i just want to build community fix people and myself obviously and see the world and just just yeah i just want everyone to be happy i just want i just want everyone to feel the way i feel right now amazing oh my god imagine you're going to the gym and you see you know an elderly person working hard and doing their my god it's such a big inspiration for you it's to so see. inspirational yeah That's amazing. Wow, great. Actually, I've, I've seen as well, like I've been going to the gym and I've seen people, elderly people, like working out and I just feel so fascinated. So I go like, oh my God, that's amazing to see, you know, those people still, you know, carry on their lives and getting fit. Yeah, I think, I think coming, from, 
my line of work, most dudes now in the age between 30 and 50, their knees have gone, their ankles have gone, their backs have gone. I'm not judging anyone for that. It's the sports they played and, you know, yeah. and for me, just something as simple as maybe like mobility work, for example. So I used to be a bodybuilder. I never done the boring stuff that I didn't think was cool because it didn't give me lots of big muscles. Yeah. And I made, that was a big mistake. Now I mobilize a lot and I'm trying to make up for bad habits and fix things that didn't work. And yeah, so I'm all for that longevity. Amazing. Ready for the next question? I am. Let's do it. Last one. Before the last question, Nathan, you know, through yeah. your walks on those paradise, those, uh, you know, beautiful uh, nature place that you go, you walk, you make your videos, two questions in one. The first part of the question is, tell me a situation or a moment that, you, you know, you're there, that you're always going to remember, you know, walking those beautiful places close to the lakes and the nature. Tell me a situation that's always going to, uh, you're going to remember that happened to you. And the second part of the question is, so far, what nature has taught you so far since you've been in touch with nature? Good question. So the first one is something that I remember while I'm always in nature. Um, this, is, this is quite a nice question, actually, because one thing that resonates with me a lot and sticks with me is I was quite a naughty child, as I said, and there wasn't a solid male figure, I guess, in my life. So my grandfather used to take me out a lot on weekends, like a Saturday or a Sunday morning. We'd go to a car boot sale, and then we'd run off into the mountains, and he would just teach me random things um, about plants, flowers, animals, and we'd pick nuts off trees, and we'd pick berries off bushes, and, and it was really nice. And I think every single, without a doubt, Every single time I'm in nature, my granddad's there with me. And, and I'm not... Um, I guess what I'm trying to say is, yeah, I just remember everything that, that he taught me as a young young kid. And I always feel like, so I'll see a certain plant, and I'll be like, oh, that's nice. I remember doing this with my granddad. And, and yeah, it's it really nice. Um, and one thing that's, I suppose, humbled me in a sense is when I walk off into nature and I don't stick to paths I will go as far away from any sort of path that I possibly can I will follow one until I see a nice bit of rock or mountain or valley that no one else will look at and go I'm going to go there and that's where I go that's where I'm going to go and what I love about it is that it's the whole saying of or adage I suppose of nature or chaos what is nature what is natural order sorry order or chaos if you look into, let's just say, a patch of land that no one's ever walked on, mm -hmm. it looks like a mess, but it's a beautiful mess. So is that the way it's supposed to be before we put our print on it? Is that order? Or is it chaos? And, and, and it's the question that I can't answer. It just keeps going around and around and around. And then you look at when I come back into the cities or the towns, I have the same question again. And I'm like... No, is this order or chaos? Because we've got nice straight lines with the streets and traffic that follow each other around, but it's essentially destroying the world. So which one's which? Is it order or chaos? And it's one of those, it's like yin and yang, and it's like, oh, one of those things that, you know, what comes first, the chicken or the egg type of thing. And, and I, I'm, I suppose what's humbling is, I suppose in the grand scheme of it, is that it doesn't really matter. I, I think that we should be embracing the chaos of nature and trying to keep it and, and not destroy it. But evolution is very much a thing and it's only going to get worse. So, you know what I mean? It, it's one of those things that makes me feel as very small in this big old world, but also makes me feel very humble, if that makes any sense. If you know what I mean. Last question for you is, would you rather be invisible or be able to fly? And what would you do? Ooh, fly. Hands down. Don't even have to think about it. I'd want to fly. Yeah. And I would fly everywhere. And I'd help people with my gift. And I would just see the world. I'd, I'd swoop down and touch the sea. And I'd go as high as I could. And just feel that, that was, oh, it's exciting. I feel like I could fly now. But yeah, definitely, I want to fly. I'd love to be able to fly. Amazing. It's not the end yet. Let's play now the word association game, okay? I'm going to give away some yeah. words. Just one word that comes to your mind. Quick thinking. Let's start with family. Family. Community. Money. Ugly. 
Fear. Bravery. Lies. Truth. Love. Love. Responsibility. Okay. So now why? Religion. Religion uh, open. Sex. Special. Politics. Aglia. <laughs> <laughs> Friendship. Um, red. Oh, I like that. Desire. Desire. Fire. Regret. None. Success. <laughs> Uh, subjective. Okay. Wish. Reality. Happiness. Underrated. One word for Wales. One word for Wales? Wales, yeah. Oh. This, this is a thing, and, and I get this more than ever now. Uh, Dylan Thomas, it's not one word, but Dylan Thomas called uh, call this an ugly, lovely town. And so an ugly, lovely town, and I like that. And, and it's not one word, but it's, it's one of those two. <laughs> Let's go with lovely. <laughs> <laughs> and the last one now, one word for nature. Nature is... I'm trying to uh, think this is sorry to delay this before I think of the right word. Nature is freeing. It's okay. where it all started and it's where it's going to end. I see. Amazing. Let's, Let's play now, eh? Nathan and the Magic Box, and you can ask me a question. But, all right, you can ask me a question now, Nathan. Right. So, question. Um, what is the best advice you've ever received? Good question, actually. the best, One of the best advice I've received. My God, I've been very lucky that I have so many... Uh, you know, good advices in my life. But you know what? The very first one that came to my mind right now um, is when I was 19 years old, I left Brazil and I moved to Portugal. Yeah. Nice. Of course, I was very young and, uh, you know, I always had the same personality I have today that, you know, go after my dreams and, uh, you know, be persistent, motivation that you, you mentioned about a few yeah. times. I always have this mindset. However, when you are 19 years old, you know, even though you have this personality, you know, you are still very young to understand life. And of yeah. course, I remember, uh, so the advice is, I remember when I arrived in Portugal and I was working in a restaurant and uh, I was very lucky because in this restaurant I was working, I was the youngest, um, you know, person there because all my colleagues, they were married, they have kids and uh, they were Portuguese and Brazilian as well. And one day, I was I was there maybe two weeks in Portugal, two weeks and a half. And yeah. uh, I remember one day before we start our shift, we had dinner together. And before we started, um, you know, we had we had some free time to talk, to you know, to have some, you know, prepare ourselves. And I find myself in a in a corner, look in the window out, outside, and I was lost in my thoughts. And suddenly, th this colleague of mine, he came. He he was older than me he was like uh, he had kids and he came up to me and said yeah. William did you I think you left a girlfriend back in Brazil and I was like no I haven't I haven't left he said to me I can see you here you know lost in your thoughts alone yeah. and he said something that I'm never gonna forget he said to me William I know you are very young you just arrived here you know you are starting a new life your family are back in Brazil all your friends are back in Brazil and you are here alone. Yeah, it's a big thing. It's very brave of you. However, you know, I I understand for you to be, you know, melancholic, feeling sad, feeling alone. And But just remember, Brazil always going to be there. Brazil is not going to run away from you. So give a, give a chance to yourself. Give a try, you know. If, if something, you know, after a while you realize that he's not your place, Brazil is going to okay. be there always. So you always can go back to Brazil. So don't give yourself time. Give yourself, you know, uh, some credit. Give yourself some time. Don't, yes, don't, yeah. think, that, don't think it's going gonna to be like that forever. Give time for yourself. Guess what? It was one of the best advice I ever had because I was literally homesick. I felt 
you know, I was feeling lonely. I, I, I was 19. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was 19. So I need yeah. I was nine, I, I, I need someone to tell me that. To say, you know what? Give a give a chance, give a time to yourself, and you 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 might you might like you might enjoy it. And uh, if it goes wrong, Brazil's gonna be there. And I was like, oh my god, yeah. thank God, I need to hear that. So I think that was one of the best. It's good advice. Advice. So it's been over twenty years since I had this advice, and I'm still here. It's, in it's fun, funny you say that as well because I've come up with that. It might have been said somewhere else, but I've come up with this kind of theory myself. But kind of backs that up and it's so say for example if you have a car uh when you when i'm 60 years old i'll think back at all the cars i've ever tried mercedes bmw or whatever blah 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 blah, blah. and then i'll go that was the best one i'm going to stick with that one and when we get in relationships we never go backwards we grow after every time well, i'd like to think we grow after every time and then when you're ready to settle down and you want a wife you're going to have all these boundaries and you're going to know what you're looking for in a woman Yeah. It's the same with pens, for example. I like these pens because I've tried a lot of pens and this is the one that I like. So the fact that most people, and I mean this, most people stay in one country their whole life baffles me. How do you know that's your place? I know this isn't my place. I love this country and I love the people, especially for their imperfections, because I've grown so much that I can do that. But I know this, it might be, but I need to go try some other countries and then when I retire, that's what I'm going to stay. And, and like you said there, you don't know until, you know, Brazil will always be there. Wales will always be here, hopefully. Yeah. Um, and we don't know until we've got out there and done these things. And at 19 as well, you know, I'm 32 now and I'm worrying about doing that. And at 19, I can imagine that was a massive step. So yeah, that, that, was, that sounds like good advice. And I remember that myself as well. Amazing, absolutely. And I think sometimes, even though you have the knowledge or you have the advice, but someone's repeating that for you, it's like, uh, it, it feels good when you hear it because, yeah, you definitely. know, absolutely. And I remember, and I've always been very independent growing up and everything. However, you know, you are young and you don't have a knowledge, life experience and having someone yeah, yeah. just to give, maybe he didn't know, I'm sure he didn't know the big impacts gave my life. And I still remember that because... Uh, you know, well, you those, see those, you those, doing a TED talk soon, no. <laughs> <laughs> so those, absolutely, and he knows that, he knows. And absolutely, because those, uh, you know, friends or people who cross your life, trust me, they, there is a, you know what I mean, always listen to them because you yeah. never know. And sometimes, sometimes uh, some words, um, you know, when someone say something to you, sometimes you have no idea that uh, it can give a big impact. And um, I'm, I'm so I'm grateful that... Uh... And it might not resonate there and then. What I yeah. found was when I was a child, I had some work done with social workers and outreach workers and a lot, a lot of stuff. Um, and they were telling me things then about self-esteem, about getting better, doing this, doing that. And when I was between the ages of, say, five and 14, I would sit there and I'd be like, what? None of this makes any sense. What are you on about? And then the penny drops 15 years later and I'm like, oh, that's what she meant. That's why yeah. I'm... The And yeah, like same with you, is you're still still holding on to that bit of advice as well. Absolutely. Nathan, did you enjoy the interview? Yeah, it's been nice. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for taking the time. Thanks for being so open and talk about your life. And uh, it's amazing, you know, to to know. And please carry on with your videos on TikTok about you know I will, the, the I will. because it's amazing. It's uh, it brings good energy. Um, you know, seeing someone, you know, share experiences through those beautiful place yeah, i mean there's gonna be some people that don't agree with everything i say but you know there's this it's okay it's okay the balance yeah, is that's good fine. The, the balance is yeah. good <laughs> definitely before you go if you can share a positive message or anything that you live by and then i live by i just i don't think there's a certain way to put it or there maybe will be but just just, just be kind Just be kind to people, be happy, you know, just smiling at someone in the street to make that person's day. You never know what other people are going through. We've all got our own problems. And funnily enough, I wrote something down today. Um, and it basically is that we're all at the center of our own universities. Everyone's got their own world and everybody's got their own to deal with. And, and we don't have to completely agree with each other to align You know, no, we don't have to align to get along. And I think we can just accept that everybody's different. And you can, you don't have to take everything so personally. And 
yeah, just just be kind and be happy to people and a bit more understanding. And I think if everyone has a similar mindset, you know, it would just be a better place. It would be a bit easier for everybody, you know. Amazing. Very good. Thanks so much for, for the interview. And you keep in touch, okay? It was a pleasure. Yes, having... definitely. Thank okay. you, William. Good to meet you. Keep in touch. And it was a I pleasure, okay? Take care. Yeah, always. Thank you. Take Bye -bye. care. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So, did you like the show? Don't forget to give a like, to share it, and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to be part of the show as well, first, subscribe to our channel, and after that, just go to our website, www.williamandthemagicbox.com, and send us a request saying why would you like to be part of the show. And I'll see you there. Bye-bye, see you next time.